that the, tw the 28 day conversion window is going away October 12th. Quick, like 30 second overview of what the changes are and why first. The changes are that the tw the 28 day conversion window is going away October 12th. And it's because of all the data restrictions across a variety of countries and states. Privacy. And yeah, basically I think people who are third party data handlers like the advertising companies are, are saying this isn't worth it for us to put ourselves in jeopardy for transferring data or holding data for that long. So seven days is the max they're willing to hold it now. The best I can tell that's probably going to be our best bet unless you have a paid tool is setting your conversion, setting up goals in Google Analytics and creating some audiences with that that you can use in Google Ads and then having your pixel on all your pages for Facebook so that you're capturing that data from those pages unless you have a paid tool. Like for a lot of people, if you have a bigger business or if you're an agency or something like that, you're going to have a paid tool doing a lot of that tracking for you. And um Google is is much more robust, I think, right now in what they're able to do and what they're willing to do. So it's interesting because Google Chrome is, is Google, right? And Google right. Chrome is the one that's going to remove the pixel after what, seven days? Is that what, uh, something like that? But then they were going to, it was actually going to happen earlier, but COVID extended it. Mm -hmm. um, but, but Google, of course, owns Chrome. So it's interesting how I'm sure they're, uh, the privacy of Facebook automatic is so more in the news. What's that? An automatic deletion of cookies after seven days is what Chrome is going to be doing. Yeah. Hmm. So this is where the third party tools, the, the, my thing is, is if this, because this is a privacy, this is coming from mm -hmm. the top, you know, the, the government. Uh, and then if, if they're going to be removed from Chrome, this is where the, it's kind of an interesting thing. I'll actually find out from Alex Becker what, what, how they, they feel this is going to affect Hyros. Um, but they're, they're going to be affected. As a, I'm sure some of those guys see this as a huge opportunity for sure, especially because right. there's other ways besides Pixel, and that's the point of the, the good tracking software. But it's still going to affect them for sure. It's going to negatively affect the, the effectiveness of any third-party tool you, you, that you use, period. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that a third-party tool is not going to make it uh, a much more, much more clear picture, which like something like Hyros would, would do. So I'll find out um, in, in, from him. Um, and it's just that. one more thing that encourages us to keep relevant content in front of those people. So if they're continuing to click on other things, even if it's a longer sales cycle, that just keeps a cookie alive. The seven days restarts if they click on something and if they go to a site. So you can extend the tracking in theory if they're actively firing the pixel. The other side of it. Firing the tracking. The other side of it for me is that like, well, two things for me, and then I'll, I'll just, I'll let, let Chris give his two cents too. But one is that we do almost all of our reporting on seven day look backs with clients. So from an agency standpoint, right. we're not getting the credit of 28 days attribution anyways. So we're, we're seven days in one day is where we live. So, so from a reporting standpoint, from an agency, it doesn't affect me that much. Uh, but um, you know, there are people who, um, made a point that they get paid on 28 day attribution based on conversions. If you're doing some type of equity deal or something like that. So then you definitely would want a third party tool that everyone trusts doing that. Uh, but then the, the other point is that I, this might also be, and it may not be, but I feel like this might also be an, a, a selling point a little bit for conversions API where Facebook plugs directly into your servers and the servers talk to each other. And that way everybody knows what's going on across everything regarding right. Facebook and your sales. So we're really focusing on that um, over the next six months. That's an initiative we're trying to wrap arms about. We're integrating it for two clients right now. We'll let you guys know as a community how that goes and how easy or how hard it is and all that good stuff. But I think it's a case by case thing. And that's kind of my two takes on it. Chris, do you have anything on it? Well, you guys pretty much covered it. I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's that conversions API seems to be kind of like as soon as we can find a robust tool that works without tech, like with actually paying someone for technical integration of that, that's that's going to be probably the way to go there. Yep. Okay. For anybody who's using WordPress, it's pretty easy. Yeah, I'm I'm curious, Penny. You were talking about you know Active Campaign as a tracking code, which we use because we use Active Campaign, and I'm wondering if that's going to block that as well. 
Yeah, I, I don't know, and I'm waiting on an answer from active campaign support <laughs> to cool. see what they're doing. Yeah, right. let us know. Let us know for yeah. sure. Keep us in the loop. It's interesting. It's like I'm, I'm not feeling the immediate pain of it, but it's you know, it's a it's a trend line of things to come, and it's you know, we have to be aware of what how that's. We used to adapt, work. yeah, and and I think it's it's important to understand that that the power of especially if you are an agency like Rob, they they do they do a 28 day look back because they do you know, revenue type of stuff. And so it's going to affect some people, but you do have to understand that if that the branding impact, especially when you're really, when you're doing, you know, 500 plus word ad copy, you're doing video ads, everlasting ads, the, the branding impact is really powerful. And so it's going to, it, it takes time for that to kick in. It just does. And so a lot of times people need to see your stuff multiple times. Uh, it helps for, for your warm audiences down the road to become higher ticket customers because they're seeing your ads all this stuff makes a difference uh, over time. The goal is to, to, to generate a 24 hour cash flow campaign. We want to generate as much positive cash flow in that first 24 hours, but it doesn't mean that we're not trying to really leverage the branding impact. That's why if you scale out an e-commerce business, you know, typically the, the chart, the line of your Google and your brand search chart and your Amazon sales are going to pr pretty much uh, parallel your ad spend on Facebook right? Or YouTube, because the more you're running these campaigns, the more people are going to go out and go to Amazon and buy your product or just do a brand search. So we know that uh, even if we can't look back if we're only using Facebook. Um, so anyways, uh, cool. so yeah.